Uh, good morning, people. Um, this is Edward King. Um, this is uh, one of many of my Talk to My Computer series. I hadn't done a, a Talk to My Computer uh, uh, presentation in some time, so, you know, it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek Talk to My Computer. Um, basically, on a Talk to My compu Computer presentation, uh, I have the, the camera pointed right at the circuitry in my computer. In this case, it's uh, pointed right at my RAM. You'll see uh, six DIMMs there of RAM, um, uh, four gigabytes piece. So uh, you can do the math. Uh, that's how much RAM this particular little workstation is running. Um, I don't know how well the uh, microphone uh, is doing on this uh, this uh, uh, presentation, considering that the uh, um, webcam is, is is stuck on the reinforcement bar on the side of my computer case, and uh, it may not pick up what I have to say, but uh, and, and you may be hearing all kinds of fan sounds, you know, and stuff like that, because while I'm talking, I'm uh, doing other things, you know, uploading things, downloading things. Uh, you know, making this presentation and uh, uh, checking emails and uh, making myself, you know, useful. It's called multitasking, people. It, it's really a handy thing to do. And uh, for that reason, my talk to uh, my computer series uh, of presentations is not m meant to be a, a strictly a video presentation. In fact, uh, I would rather that you didn't watch it. I would rather that you hear it and um, you hear my words. That's why I'm a little concerned whether or not you're going to be able to hear what I have to say. I may have to move the, uh, the uh, um, in, you know, in the future, the uh, webcam a little closer to my mouth because the microphone on the webcam is, uh, you know, not the best quality. Uh, but for its worth, uh, for what it's worth, um, <coughs> All my talk to my computer presentations are non-video audio presentations. Uh, they are the most common sort of presentation that I make. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to uh, win anybody's approval on my personal appearance. I'm not uh, asking people to look at me. I make I crack a lot of jokes about that because uh, I understand. You know, I'm an older-looking gentleman, and. Uh, you know, probably not the kind of thing that most women would lust after. Uh, but I do get a lot of compliments, I have to admit. i got to be fair. You know, um, you know, some women have been very kind to me. have said that I'm a very handsome man. Well, that's very kind of them. Uh, you know, um, I imagine that, you know, I'm, I do look handsome in, in the eyes of some women, you know. Uh, can't be altogether ugly. I mean, you know, I've... I've uh, married two wives and, and made, uh, uh, you know, sired children by two wives, so I guess, you know, there are some women out there that uh, think that uh, you know, uh, they can handle looking at me. Um, I do know uh, I make beautiful babies. All my babies, are, I can't believe how good looking they are. Sometimes I have to go, are these really mine? But I know they are. It's just that, man, I make very good looking children, and uh, that is a fact. Uh, you know, um, I mean, I get the feedback from others as well, you know, I mean, they are, they are, uh, I guess what some would call Hollywood material, you know, because they are, are very uh, photogenic uh, or you know, whatever. Well, good for them. You know, they're blessed. Um, I, I imagine when I was younger, I was too, but uh, I'm a little self-conscious of the fact that uh, I'm going to need an upper plate and I'm missing some teeth now. And I'm pushing into my mid-50s, and uh, I, I still believe I've got plenty of mileage in me yet, despite, you know, all the doctor's efforts to kill me, uh, uh, I um, still uh, seem to be uh, doing well. And uh, so, um, you know, I, uh, I do what I can, you know, uh, I, I survive as I can. and. Uh, I, um, I, I, I just, uh, <clears throat>
yeah, doing something here as well. I, I hope that one day I, I find a, a wife, a second wife. I would like to find maybe um, two more wives, you know, uh, seriously. Because I, to, to be honest, I would like to make more children. I, I love children. And uh, I think that uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, called to be a father. And uh, I have very good fatherly instincts, and, and I'm very loving to children. I don't believe in making children bleed and, 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 and bruising them. I don't, I, I don't follow that old ethic. I realize, you know, that there's some substantiation for it in the Old Testament. I, I'm aware of that. But uh, uh, there's no substantiation for breaking a child's bones, okay? And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I just don't understand, you know, where the Bible talks about, you know, bruising, you know, your, your rebellious son and leaving blue stripes and stuff like that. That uh, There's got to be a better way, you know. There's got to be a better way. I'm not saying that God's way is wrong. I just, you know... If he's he, if he really is a, a really that bad a son, um, I think he could learn a lot more just from you showing him the door and saying, "Okay, don't like my rules. There's the door. I love you enough to kick you out on the street so you learn." You know, I, I realize that there are some sons that are just that disrespectful and uh, you know uh, do not honor their fathers as they should. But that's I think not the not commonly the case I think that if you try to reason with your kids you can I, I, I really believe that I really believe there's a way you can reason with your children maybe not so much when they're younger but uh, kids are you know children aren't stupid uh, if you are if you are really dedicated to reasoning with them uh, for the most part you should be able to uh, uh, avoid using the rod now does that mean uh, that uh, you should always spare the rod? No, you know the old spare the rod, spoil the child argument. And, you know, I, I agree with that. I agree that there's a place where the rod must be used. I, I also believe there's a place where um, the rod should not be abused. And uh, sadly, often, often is, and it gets us in trouble. You know, it's what the enemy wants so that he can abolish any kind of uh, 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 physical punishment of children and I don't believe in that I believe there's a place for spankings but you know uh, it's been my experience that once a child reaches adolescence if they haven't got it by then you're wasting your time and you're doing more damage with striking them by the time they have entered what is called uh, manhood or womanhood you know if it hasn't been made clear th to them by then um, you're wasting uh, your time and um, you know um, really uh, that, that they are uh, essentially a curse okay and not a blessing and they're going to pay bitterly for being a curse instead of a blessing instead of choosing to be a blessing to their father and mother um, I know from whence I speak I'll speak from experience and um, you know uh, I, I believe that I'm a wonderful father figure uh, and and not because you know I like to think so highly of myself but because I of all the feedback that I have received from so many and so many women telling me I wish that my husband dealt with my children the way you deal with yours I used to get that a lot and uh, you know what do you do you shrug you know you because you can't tell the woman look this is what you have to tell your husband you know no you can't tell her that all right okay He's got to be a man and figure it out himself. You know, these are children, all right? You know, and uh, they're in your charge, and you have to reason with them. You have to communicate with them, okay? They are your, your offspring. They are what you're leaving behind uh, you in the world, and you have to try to uh, uh, initiate uh, some some reason. You know, there I, I heard some of these bigoted old Baptist preachers talk about how, you know, the age of reason is sinful and, and, and we should not use reason. Well, you know what? He's unreasonable. And uh, literally unreasonable. And I don't believe in that because the Bible says, you know, uh, the God when God calls his people to him, he says, come, let us reason. I'm going to talk right into the microphone on this. God says, come, let us reason together. All right? In other words, God is reasonable. In other words, we have a God of reason. 
all right and and so reason is not a bad thing all right reason is a good thing reason is godly and you have to teach your children how to reason and you must be prepared to reason with them you know I mean honestly if you're not prepared to do that with your own offspring you very likely do not deserve to be a parent you, you should not be a parent if you're not if, if you are not willing to reason with your own offspring oh my goodness you you got bigger issues you probably can't reason with anybody and uh, you know that's what I mean that's what I mean like about these uh, crazy Baptist teachers who go around you know oh we live in the age of reason it's the devil's age it's sinful you know this is nonsense people all right it's good to reason it's good to reason be prepared to reason always want to reason with your loved ones always want to reason with your children man I just I couldn't believe it when I first heard a pastor talk about that how that you know reason is bad you know you see that man doesn't have Christ what that man has is is bigotry all right he so loves his ignorance that he says that reason is a sin okay people like that stay away from them they are very unreasonable people and uh, I mean literally I mean they say so themselves reason is bad so they're unreasonable Do you really want a, an unreasonable pastor uh, I I don't you know anyway don't be uh, afraid to reason with your children all right our loving father says come let us reason together okay reason with your children he's our example of what a good loving father does he reasons with his children God is good you know God is good when you start getting this in perspective you start seeing how good God is uh, you know man your life will be so much better uh, for this knowledge don't be afraid to reason right you, you shouldn't be able afraid to reason you shouldn't be able afraid to reason with your wives either wives plural like the Bible calls them wives uh. you know so many pastors they pick and choose they cherry pick in the Bible things you know that they want uh, to use to um, uh, bolster their uh, man-made doctrines but they don't embrace the fullness of God's holy truth Okay, and that's why, you know, they're going around telling us it's a sin for a man to have more than one wife. They, they have no clue that they're really taking orders from uh, 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 the God of this world. Okay, God of this world that says, you know, hey, listen, we'll let you uh, set up a church and you can collect money tax free as long as you uh, uh, agree to uh, comply with uh, our agenda. Uh, we'll let you keep collecting tax free money. Uh, for your church, right? But you have to understand that this is not godliness. Okay, what you what, what you're engaging in there is called the synagogue of Satan. All right, and what you're doing, if you agree to you sign up with that deal, okay, what you're doing is you're agreeing to take instructions from the synagogue of Satan. Right? This is the reason why uh, uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but that farce that. Uh, 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 that farce that was generated, I think, back in 1967 by uh, 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 the Rothschild bankers, uh, that they would have us believe, they would have us believe, is Israel. It's not, okay? I'm telling you it's not Israel, okay? Uh, Israelis are not Israelites, okay? You read the Bible carefully, you'll find out. If you read the Bible carefully, you dis you'll discover that Israelis are not Israelites that means they're not God's holy chosen people all right it's, this is very important to understand that they've got us English speaking people uh, uh, confused with two very similar looking words you know like uh, Nazarite and Nazarene okay two two different things okay Israel Israelis are not Israelites that's why the, the, the words are different all right Okay, there is a relationship, no doubt there are relationships that we can draw, all right, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's like, I'll tell you how much an Israeli is like a, a, an Israelite. An Israeli is like an Israelite uh, as somebody from uh, uh, India is like a, an Aboriginal North American indigenous native. That's how much, okay? In other words, you know, you, you talk to some, some, some fellow, you know, from India, okay? I don't care where in India, anywhere, anywhere in India, all right? And you tell him, oh, 
So you're uh, you're you're, you're uh, 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 an Aboriginal North American native, okay? See what he tells you. Oh, do you speak Cree? He'll look at you like you lost your rocker, okay? Because he 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 is not uh, uh, native to North America, but because natives in North America were called Indians, right? Okay. Now, who, which one is the Indian? The one from India, or the one from North America? You tell me. I'll tell you who, who, who is, okay? The man from India is an Indian, all right? There's, there, there are no Indians uh, uh, born and bred, uh, uh, naturally occurring in, in, in uh, this great nation prior to uh, colonialist, colonialist times, all right? Okay? No. Okay, they, they, there are other terms for them. They're indigenous peoples. They're native peoples. You, you know what I like to call them? Myself? It could, because it makes sense. Because it's logical. First Nations. That's what they call themselves. And we should honor them by calling them First Nations instead of Indian. You know, they still do that. The federal government still calls them Indian. They're not Indian. Okay? They're not from India. Alright? They are First Nations. They are the First Nations of this great country. Okay? And uh, uh, they have every reason to that claim. All right, but uh, I'll spare some time on that, you know, some other day, I guess. It's just that uh, I, I just want to draw these things to your attention because Israelis are not Israelites, okay? That's one thing you need to understand. The Israelites of the Bible, these are not the same people today that are calling themselves Israelis, all right? And uh, their sham, their, their, their created sham by the Rothschild Company, uh, that their farce uh, that they call Israel is not the true Israel of the Bible. It isn't. It's not the biblical Israel. You know, I mean, I'm sorry if I'm upsetting people and breaking their hearts and everything because they all have these great fantasies of being Israelites, but they're not Israelites. Now, um, there are likely, I'm not going to deny the possibility of this, there are likely uh, some uh, people, all right, living in Israel that can ha claim true lineage to Israelite, you know, true Israelite lineage, okay? They're, they're few and far between, all right? See, they used to think that they, they could do this. They used to think, you know, and, and so many don't know this, but so I'm going to tell you this, but there used to be uh, some that actually thought uh, that they could, uh, through mitochondrial DNA, I, I want to say that again because it's really an important uh, uh, thing to know, through mitochondrial DNA, they could prove their, their, their uh, ancestry uh, to the uh, Hebrew lineage. And, and do you know what happened when they actually ran the tests? They found out that 98% uh, of the populace of it, uh, what they're calling Israel, or Israel, okay, 98% of the populace there did not have the mitochondrial, you know, that's on the mother's side, DNA, to validate that they were indeed of the uh, um, Hebrew lineage, okay? So what we got is a bunch of imposters calling themselves Jews and are not, but do lie, living in a place that they generated, they created back in 1967 officially, saying this is Israel. You know, what, what, what a farce. What a farce. Okay? You know, don't get me wrong. You know, that does not make me a Jew hater. What? Uh, you know, uh, what did Jesus say? Do you hate me? Are you gonna, do, do, you, do you want to kill me now because I tell you the truth? Do you hate me because I tell you the truth? This is the truth, people. I'm not. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I mean, I'm sorry if anyone's upset. It's just like you know. But you know what's worse? Living a lie. You know what's worse? Holding the truth on righteousness, as so many of these murderers do, and they are murderous. There, there, there is no, there is no person. I mean it. I, I've, I've watched this. I've read about this carefully. What these people do. There is no more bloodthirsty people on the face of the earth 
than these people calling themselves Israelis. They are the most bloodthirsty people alive. And I used to wonder, well, why is that? Why are they so violent? Why, why are they so murderous? Why, why, why would they be that way? You know, I mean, there's always generally a reason. You know, you want to you want to use reason. Remember, when I'm getting back to reason. Okay, you, you, there's got to be a reason. All right. I mean, there's even a reason why the devil operates the way he does. Okay. Well, I figured it out. The reason why uh, uh, Israelis are the most bloodthirsty, murderous peoples alive on the earth uh, is because, well. First of all, they're imposters, okay? So they are uh, the, the sons and daughters of Belial, all right? That's one thing, okay? Secondly, uh, uh, the reason why they are the most bloodthirsty, uh, murderous people uh, on the earth is because of their religion. See, their religion, all right, is not to be confused with the Israelite religion. They are not of the Israelite religion. Uh, they've made a, a, a close counterfeit to it so that people would think that they were of the Israelite religion, but they are not of the Israelite religion or faith. Okay. I'm uh, going to let off for now because my daughter just woke up and she's uh, telling me about her sister here. Okay, I'll be right over there, honey. All right? I want to be a father. I want to raise up seed. I want to raise up seed and raise them and teach them in the way that they should go. And I want to teach them about how uh, these Israelis usurped the, the, the title that belongs to God's true people. Okay, God's true Israelite people, God's true Israelite nation. I want to, I want to explain to my daughters and all my offspring, this is how the Israelis robbed God's holy people. All right. Okay. God bless you. Thank you for listening.